Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily News. I'm Nicholas Richardson. One of the main current topics in Poland is the removal of an Afghan family from Germany to Poland. The German Federal Police did this without consulting the Polish authorities. Yesterday, Prime Minister Donald Tusk announced a conversation on this subject with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. According to the Germans, no such conversation took place. Are we facing a flood of illegal immigrants with the tacit and general consent of the Polish government? <laughs> Prime Minister Donald Tusk announced. I will be talking to Chancellor Scholz in a moment about an unacceptable incident involving German police and a migrant family on our side of the border. The matter must be explained in detail. However, the conversation did not take place. These are the findings of journalist Alexandra Fedorska, who spoke to the German government's press office. Such a conversation has not taken place and is not planned. The aim was to clarify the situation of illegal immigrants being expelled from Germany to Poland. On Friday, a German police car brought a five-member family from Afghanistan to Ozinov Dolny in the West Pomeranian Voivodeship. The incident was confirmed by the German Federal Police. Since there was no reaction from the Polish side for several hours, the officers decided to take the family with a patrol to the Polish-German border near Hohenwurzen to release them to Poland. The excuses were bizarre, to say the least. On the way, the family's children complained of feeling unwell, so the federal police officers went to a pharmacy in the village of Osin of Dolnid to provide them with first aid. Because the children's mother forgot her mobile phone at a federal police station, she was taken back to Brandenburg in a patrol car and then to her family in Poland. The Polish border guard commander-in-chief spoke to the president of the presidium of the federal police in Germany. The German side expressed regret. Western officers allegedly did not follow the procedures. Meanwhile, Polish deputy minister of internal affairs and administration Maciej Duszczyk trivializes the situation and talks about an accident at work. The people who did it, I mean policemen, were very young and experienced policemen. It was absolutely an accident at work from what we see today. It was an accident at work. An accident at work may occur when a young German policeman confuses a German with an Afghan, which is not difficult enough today, but not when people are consciously and deliberately transported across the border and dropped off in another country. This is the same deputy minister who questioned the German police's data on over 3,500 illegal immigrants brought to Poland from beyond Poland's western border. The German side found illegal crossing of the Polish-German border 5,621 times, and out of this pool of 5,621 people, 3,000 578 were expelled to Poland. From January 1st to the end of April, 266 people were turned back. These are the official data of the border guard. I must say that I do not know these German data. I present those that are consistent with the statistics. I do not know what country data you use. This shows civility towards Germany, say publicists. Donald Tusk was already standing to attention in front of the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and now a German woman congratulated him in Brussels. <laughs> And yes, in order to equalize Polish cash benefits to those in Germany, a family of four per month will receive, among others, an adult allowance, a family allowance, and a social apartment with an area of at least 80 square meters. In total, we will pay 7,085 zloty and 22 zloty from our tax taxes to support a family of four illegal immigrants. That's not all. You also need access to education and health care. It cannot be the case that an unemployed person receives benefits that are greater or comparable to the national average in Poland or even higher. And in his expose to Parliament, Donald Tusk announced, nobody can really beat me in the European Union. The Pabianica Medical Centre is to pay a half a million zwoty fine for refusing to give an abortion. Two more hospitals are also accused. The Minister of Health emphasised that imposing a penalty there, according to her, would most likely be justified. Will the Ministry of Health now, from now on punish hospitals for doctors' constitutional freedom of conscience? Editor Holdinska investigates. Half a million zloty, approximately 125,000 euro fine for refusing to perform an abortion. Health Minister Elzbieta Leszczyna has already initiated inspections in subsequent facilities and she singled out two facilities. Is such action legal? One proceeding has already resulted in the imposition of a penalty. The facility in Pabianizo is to pay 550,000 zloty. The National Health Fund conducts inspections regarding refusals to terminate pregnancies in medical facilities throughout the country. On what basis did the minister punish the hospital? This is propaganda carried out by the Ministry of Health in consultation with the National Health Fund, which has 
was probably forced to make such a definitive decision under pressure on the basis of a regulation that has not been thoroughly negotiated with the other party that implements the regulations. In Poland, there are only two situations when an abortion may be performed to save the woman's health and life, and as a result of a pregnancy resulting from a crime. I do not see a problem. A doctor is always obliged to save a woman's life because without it, the child will not survive. The amendment to the regulation on general terms and conditions of contracts for the provision of health care services entered into force at the end of May. It concerns the provision of end of pregnancy services by hospitals and requires a health care provider to organize the provision of services in such a way that at least one doctor can, may perform the procedure that saves a woman's life or health. I'm outraged by the imposition of such penalties on medical facilities. Civic Coalition promised a no-fault system for doctors and today it wants to punish doctors, the hospital and indirectly doctors for not performing certain procedures, probably because, according to the director, the appropriate documents were not provided. The hospital does not agree not only with the decision of the National Health Fund, but also with the findings of the inspection of the facility. Pabianitsa Medical Center SPZU does not agree with the findings of the inspection carried out by the National Health Fund and the fine imposed in the amount of 550,000 zloty. The hospital did not deny the patient the right to have an abortion. It only indicated that it was necessary for the patient to submit final diagnostic results. The hospital will exercise its right to submit in writing an appeal to the president of the National Health Fund against the results of the inspection, that is, objections to the contents of the post-inspection statement. If the National Health Fund does not accept the hospital's position, the facility announced it will fight in court. The anti-abortion regulations in force in Poland since 1993 were changed in 2020. Previously, the Act allowed abortion in the event of severe and irreversible fetal impairment or an incurable disease that threatens life. The Constitutional Tribunal found this provision unconstitutional. The Minister justified that due to the abuse of the conscience clause by some doctors, women cannot exercise their right to terminate their pregnancies. So the Ministry of Health issued a regulation. This regulation is nothing more than financial blackmail against hospitals whose doctors, using their constitutional freedom of conscience, simply refuse to participate in the abortion procedure. We have a regulation that does not require the President's signature, so it is simply a circumvention of the law. Circumventing the law by bypassing not only the President but also the same, where four draft bills regarding changes to the abortion law are still awaiting a vote. European Union leaders ended a discussion on who should take the bloc's top jobs for the next five years without agreement on Monday, aiming instead for a decision at a summit next week. The leaders' meeting was the first since the European parliamentary elections, which saw gains for the centre-right and right-wing nationalists, but humiliating defeats for French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. We had the, the, the dinner uh, together with the, the leader, so it's a good occasion to exchange views to take into account the result of the uh, elections and to prepare uh, the formal meeting of the European Council that will take place uh, next week here in Brussels. Uh, it's just a good conversation. It goes in uh, the right direction, I think, but there's no agreement uh, tonight at this stage. Over dinner in Brussels, the EU's 27 national leaders discussed who should run the powerful European Commission's executive body, who should chair their European Council meetings, and who should take the post of foreign policy chief. No, there's no deal. No, there's no deal yet. There are some names that are also circulating in the media. The most obvious one is Ursula von der Leyen, but there's also no decision on her yet. On top of that, we also need a majority from the European Parliament. The three parties in the middle do have a majority, but not a large majority. So tonight was also about how to interpret the outcome. The centre held its stance, but the flanks also grew, especially in some member states. They had been widely expected to nominate Ursula von der Leyen of Germany for a second term as European Commission Chief, Portuguese ex-Premier Antonio Costa as Council President, and Estonian Prime Minister Kaya Kallas as top diplomat. That's the news. Thank you for watching. And from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.